Let's knit a baby blanket, shall we? Hey there, and welcome back to Be Hooked, the place where you and I turn yarn into anything we want, hobby or lifestyle. If you're brand new to this channel, welcome. I can't wait to teach you how to knit a baby blanket. And if you've been around for a while, yes, I did get my hair cut. I cut all of it off. I just needed to change. <laughs> Thank you once again for joining me in this video. We're gonna knit a baby blanket together. This is so simple and so easy. It's great for a first project. Now, before we get to the first lesson, the cast on, we need to talk about the supplies because you are a beginner. This is one of the areas that I made a big mistake. Well, first of all, I didn't realize that knitting has a tendency to expand a little bit as you go along, as you knit your rows. Well, I also didn't understand that the project has to fit on the needle. So because of that, and because we're knitting a blanket that's about 36 inches wide, we need longer knitting needles. We can't just use the straights. So in order to make our baby blanket fit all on the needle, we need a pair of circulars. This is an interchangeable set. So this cord actually comes apart and the, the knitting needles are separate as well, but you don't have to have an interchangeable set. You just need a pair of circular needles. So something with a cord and the, the total length needs to be 36 inches at least because that's the length of our blanket. Now keep in mind that that measurement is tip to tip. So if I were to stretch this out, of course you can't see the whole thing there in the frame, but from tip to tip should measure at least 36 inches. The next thing you'll need to do is get three skeins of Red Heart Dreamy yarn. This is a medium weight. We're gonna use three balls. So pick three different colors. Now in order for this pattern to work out, you do need to have three different colors, okay? All right, now that we have all of the supplies ready to go, the first thing we need to do is cast on. So let's see how to do that next. So the first thing you'll need to do is get both ends of your skein. We really don't need to buy two skeins for this in each color. We can just use one tail from the middle of the ball and one tail from the end of the ball. We'll hold these together to make our blanket go a little faster and make it a lot squishier. So find those two ends and put them together so that they're even and we can start on the cast on. We'll be using the long tail cast on for this, so we need to estimate a long tail. Because we have to cast on a lot of stitches, we wanna make sure we have enough yarn. So grab your needle, and then just take your two ends, and we're going to wrap it around there a few times. This is just the estimating process. So I'm just wrapping, that's two wraps, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. I like to do a nice round number. Pinch that off with your finger back here and you can let it go. And this is roughly the amount of yarn that it'll take to make 10 stitches. So then you'll take this tail and you'll fold it over. That'll be enough for 20 stitches, fold it over again, and so on. All right, so you'll take the yarn right at the, at the end here this is my working yarn over here coming from my ball of yarn. This is the tail. Once again, your tail is going to be much longer because you're casting on 82 stitches. I'll be casting on 12 for my little swatch here. So I'll lay that over my needle. I'm opting to not use a slip knot for this. Then I want to gather it in my finger. So put your two fingers together just like this and stick that between the two strands. Grab your fingers here in the background and pinch that off. Now open your two fingers and steady that on top of your needle. And then we're going to swing it down, grab the strand on the front of your thumb, swing it back, grab the strand on your finger, and then release that thumb loop over the tip of the needle. Then you should be able to just pull on that, tighten it up, and that's two stitches cast on. Now I'll say that one more time. Wrap it around, grab the front strand on your thumb, wrap it back, grab the strand on your finger, then release your thumb over the tip of the needle. I'll also link to a video where I have the long tail cast on in complete beginner format. It's super slow. If you need some practice with this, 
then you can check that video linked in the description and I'll also have it on your screen here. Now keep in mind that two strands corresponds with one stitch for this pattern. So when you're counting your cast on stitches, you're doing it in groups of two technically. So this is one stitch, two, three, four, five, and six. So the long tail cast on is pretty simple, right? You'll need to make sure you're casting on 82 stitches as you just heard, but do keep in mind that this is a pretty flexible pattern. If you want a wider blanket, this is where you would make that adjustment. Just keep in mind though, that the pattern is written for three skeins of dreamy yarn. And if you do go with a bigger blanket, well, you likely won't have enough. So you need to make sure that you get extra yarn if that's the case. Now, if you want a smaller blanket, you can also make this adjustment here. You'll just cast on fewer stitches. Okay, so we've cast on 82 stitches. We're ready to start knitting. Now, once you have all your stitches cast on your needle, and keep in mind, you're gonna have some that's flowing into your cord here. That's why it's a good idea to have that 36 inch cord. I'm using the slightly smaller one because I've just got a swatch here. So you'll have a lot more stitches on your needle. When you have 82, we're ready to start on the first row. Now the stitch pattern is incredibly easy for this particular pattern. We're only going to work with knit stitches. So when you get to this point here, we just want to turn our work. So I'm going to take it and just flip it. Now you can see my tail end really clear here. I've just got a, a little bit left, just a couple of inches. So this is my working strand. That's really important because when you estimate, if you overestimate and you have a long tail and you don't keep track of that and you start knitting with your tail, well, you'll run into all kinds of problems when you come back around and realize that you've done that. So you wanna make sure you're not knitting with your tail and I'll just slide these stitches down to the end and I'm ready to start knitting. Now, when you work a knit stitch, you're simply going to take the tip of your other needle, stick it into the stitch from front to back. So this is what it'll look like from the front. And when you flip it over, it'll look like that. So I'm holding that needle there with my finger. So I just wanna take that working yarn, wrap it around the tip of my needle and knit it off. Now what we can do from this point is grab your tail, give that a little pull, and then I'll tighten up that stitch. Now I wanna show you the knit stitch again using my dominant hand here. There's two ways of knitting. This is the way that I like to knit, but if you're a crocheter, you might find the other method a little more comfortable for you. So let's work with this dominant hand for a few more stitches. I'll find my next stitch. Once again, keeping in mind that it is two strands of yarn insert my needle knitwise. I'll take the yarn, wrap it around the tip, and knit it off. By the way, this is sometimes called flick knitting. And I was a crocheter first. I knitted in the continental style for a little while before I settled in on this one is really comfortable for me. So that's flick knitting. Let's look at this other option. Now I'm going to drop it from my dominant hand, pick it up in my non-dominant hand the same way that I would hold my yarn as if I were crocheting. So I've sort of got it wrapped around my pinky there under these two fingers and over my index finger here. I'll find my next stitch. Now I'll still insert my needle in the same way, but the motion feels a little different. Watch where the working yarn is coming there from the back side of that needle. I'll stick my needle in the stitch just like before, and then I just simply want to grab that from the back there and pull it through. And slide everything down, work that again. It's going to be a little tighter here on this first row because our cast on stitches are not as stretchy as our traditional stitch. So as we work up a few more rows, this technique will get a lot more comfortable. You can see things are a little tight. I'm having to sort of push them down. That's okay, that's totally normal. So that is the continental style of knitting. Whichever you prefer, they actually look the same no matter what. 
So I'm gonna go back here to my comfortable style of knitting and finish knitting the rest of the stitches in my swatch. Now for you, you'll go ahead and knit every single one of your cast on stitches until you get to the very end. So that's it. All we're doing is knitting for this entire project. We're gonna get a lot of our pattern from the color and the way that we use the yarn because we're doubling those strands up. So we're going to knit the first row as you've seen. Let's have a review one more time so you know what to do on that second row. Okay, so once you get to the end of your row, your work should look something like this, only of course quite a bit longer. So we're ready to start on row two. We're not changing anything with the stitch pattern, but what you'll need to do is turn your work once again. So I'm just flipping it in this direction, taking my needle along for the ride, and I'm ready to start knitting once again. So the first thing I always do is get my stitches situated. They're a little tight, like I mentioned, because we've got that first row, so no worries there. I'll find my first stitch, get my needle into position, gather up my yarn to knit the first stitch. And I'll continue knitting until I get to the end of the row. No changes here, just knitting. So the result of knitting every single stitch for every single row gives you a stitch pattern called the garter stitch. This is one of the signature stitches in knitting and you've probably seen it many times before. It gives you that characteristic bumpy sort of wavy texture. It's really squishy and really stretchy and very warm, making it great for your baby blanket. Now we understand the stitch pattern. We're going to knit every stitch for every single row, but as you anticipated, we need to do some color changes. That's what really brings this pattern to life. So before we get into the know-how, the, the physical steps to changing the colors, let's first have a look at the color pattern itself so you can know exactly what you need to do and when. Then from there, we'll have a look at exactly how you're going to take your two strands of yarn from your one skein and tra transition that so you have one strand from one color and one strand from another color. So here we have an overview of what the color pattern looks like for our baby blanket. Now keep in mind that this is sort of a side view and although I've been knitting with the gray, two strands of gray for my swatch so it's easier for you to see on camera, we actually start at this edge right here. So that is our cast on edge and we work in this direction. You'll notice here that we have five different stripes and when we break it down to give it a name, this is what it looks like. So we have A, 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 B, 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 C, and C, C. So you'll use this reference in order to guide what two strands you hold together. So for example, this would be your first strand, this would be your second strand, and so on. Okay, so the next thing you need to know is how long do you work each of these stripes? Well, because we want things to be nice and uniform, we're going to work each stripe for about seven inches. So from one side to the next is going to be seven inches, and that'll be the same for each one of our stripes. Okay, so now that you get the hang of that color pattern, let's talk about how to physically make that transition from our two color, which is what we've started with here, to where we have to add in that second color. So the first thing you'll need to do is find your working yarn and you're going to trim one of them. Now leave yourself a tail that's about eight inches or so. That'll give you enough to weave in later. I'll trim one and just completely let that one go. Then I've got my second yarn here. I'm gonna have that here in the background, just ready to go. And I'll pretend as if I'm going to continue knitting. So holding my work this way is where I would have ended. Then I'm going to flip it and get ready to knit. 
So insert your needle knitwise just as you normally would. I've got my two ends here. So tail right here. I'll tuck that behind. And then this is my good piece of yarn. So grab your second color and then fold it in half, leaving yourself a tail that's about eight inches. And then just place that over the tip of that needle. Then also take that strand from that previous color and wrap it around. Now I'm holding all of this in my pinky just so I can get it through that stitch. So I'm pulling through one of each color and knitting it as normal. And I've got that first stitch. We're pretty much ready to go now, but we do have some loose ends that we need to get tidied up so that we don't drop things, drop our stitches completely. So to fix that, we'll just take the two ends from each color, just make a knot with these, just to secure things for now. And we'll weave them in later. So moving forward, I'll go ahead and insert my needle knitwise, make sure you're gathering up the right strands here, and then continue knitting. So no change to the stitch pattern here, we're just knitting, but we've got our new color. All right, so the last technique you need to know to finish your blanket is of course the cast off. Now you'll do this several steps down the road. You wanna make sure that you're working your color transition as you've seen it in the written instructions. Once again, behookedcrochet.com slash easy knit blanket. That'll give you the instructions on where to make those color transitions, to change from one skein to the next and how to blend the two strands so you get the pattern that we want. So once you do all of that, then we get to cast off. So when you get to the point where you're ready to cast off, you'll simply turn your work, set yourself up as if you're knitting another row, and then we're going to knit the first two stitches. Then we'll take the first stitch that we knit and pass it over that second one. So just to use your other needle to slide it under there and you'll probably need to pull up just a little bit. And I like to hold this on my other needle here with my index finger as I slide it over just like that. Then we can knit the next stitch and repeat. So we knit one, we pass it over once we get that initial setup. Knit another one, pass it over. We'll do that until we get to the end of the row. Then when you make it to your last stitch, you'll go ahead and knit it and then pass that stitch over until you have just that one loop remaining on your needle. Then we can go ahead and trim a tail. Once again, leave it about eight inches or so. Then just pull up on that loop. What I like to do is pull that tail through the loop, make sure things are nice and secure, and it sort of fixes that little corner that tends to get a little messy. Now, of course, the last thing you'll need to do to finish your blanket is weave in those ends. I wanna show you a couple of tips that I have personally that I've learned sort of the hard way over the years on how to weave in your ends so that they actually stay in. And then I wanna give you a virtual high five because at that point, your blankets are complete. So the type of darning needle I like to use when I'm weaving in my ends, especially for knitting, is the bent tip. You can see how that tip is bent just a little bit. That really helps me to weave it in. If you don't have one of those, it's not a big deal. You can still do this technique without it. So I want to isolate sort of like the bump of the stitch. So I'm kind of going in and always going in the same direction. Now you can skip up a row if you want or if you can grab both of them, that works too. Sometimes I find it easier to skip, and by skip I mean jump from this one to this one rather than go this one to this one. It really doesn't matter all that much, i found. And you'll work it so you've got a few stitches on your needle. Go ahead and pull that through. You don't wanna to pull too tight because as you can see that will tuck in 
that little piece of the of the side there basically so we don't want that to happen and then what i'll do is i'll jump to the next ridge catch my yarn under there and then just sort of work that same technique down and then we can trim that off so you'll have to do that for all of your remaining ends and that's all there is to it well i think a big congratulations is in order to you because you're well on your way to finishing your baby blanket. You were able to do more than I was able to do so many years ago when I tried to make a baby blanket just like this one for my nephew. I'm so excited for you that you're able to finish it and gift it to somebody special. And thank you for allowing me to be a little part of that journey for you. Now, I also want to thank my sponsor, Red Heart, for allowing me to bring this tutorial to you today. Red Heart Dreamy is a dreamy product, right? It's a great yarn and it's perfect for this baby blanket. Now, if you loved this video or my teaching style and you want to learn more about knitting and crochet, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and subscribe to the Be Hooked channel right here on YouTube. You can find more videos just like this one. There's quite literally hundreds of them to teach you how to knit and crochet. Now you can also go ahead and check out some of these videos here to the side of your screen. They're hand selected to figure out exactly what you want from me and how I'm able to serve you in that way. So check out some more of those videos after you subscribed and I will see you in the next video, my friend. Bye for now.